Hello guys, welcome to my latest video. This is a very special piece, one that's taken the best part of a year now. I was commissioned earlier on this year in February by Lieutenant Dick Downs to draw the Tornado GR1, which has recently gone into retirement, alongside the Tornado GR4, which is the latest version of this fantastic plane. I'll hand you over to Dick Downs. Hello everyone, my name is Dick Downs. I was a Tornado G01 pilot on 31 Squadron between 1987 and 1990. I commissioned Nick to draw this picture for me, which shows the evolution of the aircraft from Tornado GR1 Delta Lima in the foreground to Tornado GR4, which is also Delta Lima in its evolved state breaking away in the background. This is to mark the retirement from service of this superb jet in 2019. Thank you, Dick. Uh, what I thought I'd do as I'm drawing this picture for you is just give you a little bit of background uh, of the plane itself uh, and a little bit about the evolution of the plane. Uh, I aptly called this picture Evolution since it exemplifies the journey taken by the tornado from a Cold War mainstay of the RAF's presence in Germany in the 1980s to the versatile multi-mission precision attack aircraft of the last decade before its retirement. A period of nearly 40 years that covered. The key to this drawing was rendering the two tornadoes in a 67 wing, that's a fully swept, is in the fact that they are the same aircraft showing the evolution of the jet's capability through its weapons load, mainly carried under the belly. In the foreground is the Tornado GR1 registration ZD790 Delta Lima in period 31 colours and disruptive camouflage. This is from its days at RAF Bruggen in Germany during the 1980s. In the background breaking away is the Tornado GR4 registration ZD790 Delta Lima. The tail number is 099, which actually denotes that it was the 99th aircraft upgraded from the GR1 to the GR4 in a modern grey colour scheme. And this is from the Tornado's final months in service during Operation Shader over Iraq, which began in 2014. This was a very, very difficult, almost impossible picture to draw because an actual photograph or image of these two planes with this weapon loadout doesn't really exist. So there was a lot of artistic license, uh, a lot of reference images that I had to get my head around uh, and perspectives and things like that. So it's one that's taken me such a long time because it wasn't something that was just uh, copying an image that already existed. This, is, uh, this has taken uh, so much time, but I'm so happy with the finished outcome. And I hope that uh, Lieutenant Dick Downs also is as well. The jet in the foreground, circa 1988, is fitted with 1500 litre drop tanks under the wings and a sky shadow radar jamming pod on the left wing outboard station. Along with a partner Boz 107 chaff and flare pod on the right outboard station, this was pretty much standard fit for the aircraft in those days. As for armament, the under fuselage hard points, the shoulder stations, were capable of carrying up to eight 1,000 pound general purpose bombs. These were effectively World War II weapons with cast or forged cases and fitted with either free fall ballistic tails or the number 117 retarder tail for low level delivery. So, you may think that this is no different from a Lancaster, hey? Well, not quite. The Tornado was equipped with an accurate weapon aiming computer, which meant that with a suitably trained crew, the aircraft was capable of tossing a very large bomb through your living room window from a few miles away at night in all weathers. To prove the point, in 1984, a detachment from 617 Squadron, the Dambusters, led by one of uh, Dick Downs' former bosses, Pete Dunlop, won the US Strategic Air Command Curtis LeMay Trophy, an international bombing competition held at Ellsworth Air Force Base, North Dakota. In winning the trophy, Pete and his navigator, Dick Middleton, achieved a high score of 2,616 out of a possible 2,650. During the competitive mission sorties involving navigation, evading simulated ground threats and weapons delivery on target and exactly on time. As Dick joined the 31 Squadron with Pete as his boss, it was against this backdrop of high achievement that was executed uh, their Cold War duties. The weapons load you see here would have been typical for them to be ranging 
over enemy tank formations as they would aim to blunt any east-west advance. Even the heavy armour, a direct hit from a 1,000 pound bomb would completely destroy a Russian main battle tank. As Lieutenant Dick Downs was leaving the Royal Air Force, the Tornado was undergoing a midlife update which introduced a raft of upgrades and enhancements, including night vision capabilities through pilot's goggles and infrared sensors, a new weapons uh, and onboard lasers and a GPS guidance system. In the background DL, now fully upgraded from the aircraft Dick flew, sports larger 2,250 litre drop tanks, new defensive jammers and chaff and flare dispensers. The eagle-eyed amongst you will note that she's not le lost her left gun and gained an extra bulge under the nose. For the forward-looking infrared, or FLIR, which projects a thermal image onto the pilot's head up display, HUD. However, the real key to understanding the massive strides the aircraft made in its core role to deliver air-to-ground weapons with high precision lies in the shoulders. The shader weapon fit comprised two Paveway 4 laser guided bombs, about half the size of the weapons that were used on the GR1, but more accurate, so making better use of the smaller warhead, whilst minimising any collateral damage in the immediate area. The Paveways, drop rear first, then the front bomb, would be guided onto the targets by the navigator using the light li littening laser targeting pod on the forward left pylon. With the target shown on one of his displays in the cockpit, the navigator would guide the paveway into the exact aiming point using the built-in laser pointer. While these weapons were used against fixed targets like buildings, the GR4 had a better weapon to attack mobile targets such as armoured vehicles, the Brimstone missile, two of which are shown on an inclined weapons carrier so they don't hit the littening pod when they're fired on the rear of the left shoulder. The Brimstone has proven itself to be the best in class at, at taking out armoured vehicles. This highly flexible weapons fit enabled Tornado crews to provide superbly accurate hard kill support to the troops on the ground during battles in close contact with enemy forces. This evolution of capability has kept pace with the Tornado's changing role from Cold War low-level fighter bomber to a modern medium-level scalpel supporting a variety of different ground support roles, something that I really hope that I've been able to capture with the detail in the, in the drawing. I'm so happy with the end result. Uh, I hope that uh, anybody that has flown one of these planes can also see the time and effort that's gone into it. Uh, the period details, uh, for the pedantic former crews uh, and anybody that is sort of a, a, a plane enthusiast, I'm hoping that there's a little bit in there for everybody. The pilot's even looking at the viewer uh, while the navigator is watching the other aircraft break away. Uh, and this is again just one of those small details that uh, after hours and hours and various different images that were thrown backwards and forwards that we decided to try and capture. So all in all, I'm so, so pleased with how it turned out. Uh, like I say, it's taken an enormous amount of time. Uh, I wanted to get everything spot on uh, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'd really love to know what you think of it down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button uh, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm doing weekly uh, videos, tutorials uh, and, and lots of different time-lapse videos as well. But um, I just wanted to say a huge thank you uh, to Dick Downs for commissioning me to draw this piece. Uh, it's one of my favourite drawings that I've ever done. Uh, I do have a passion for um, air aircraft, particularly uh, fighter jets. So it was a wonderful piece to draw and uh, one that I hope is displayed uh, with pride up in your office. So thank you so much once again. Um, I'll just leave you with the, the final finishing touches of the drawing now and then there's just one finished image of it um, once it was sprayed and signed. I don't want to put a, a number of hours that this has taken me on this. Um, it, it's too many to mention, but like I say, well, well worth it. I did finish it off with a very subtle cloudy background, which I think emphasizes uh, some of the details. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Hit subscribe, smack the notifications button, 
follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter.